Welcome to Windows on the World, bringing you cutting edge news, empowering information and no conspiracy theories. On tonight's show, local authorities are acting like land pirates. Most people seem to be affected by this. We've covered the issue of council tax and the procedure of council tax, the recovery of council tax on the show many times before. I did a short article and then a video called Council Tax Pantomime Court Procedure. And before we start today's show, it would be good to actually have a look at this. This is Mark Windows from windowsontheworld.net. We have a new show every Sunday on the website and it goes out after 9pm. This is an audio of an article on the site called Council Tax Pantomime Council Court Procedure. Now, having written much about council tax and had much experience of the lies and deception used by local authorities, here is some useful information on the subject and their court procedure. First of all, am I liable to pay council tax? A lot of people ask this question. Liability to pay council tax actually comes from the poor laws and not the 1992 Local Government Finance Act, which is what all those administering council tax will tell you. Now, being a registered person on a roll means there is a liability to pay through the registration of a person through your registration by a parish. The poor laws of Britain meant councils owed you a duty of care as you are their registered property through the Crown. You're a pauper. In return, you are liable to pay any taxes and have been given certain obligations. The poor laws meant that if you were vagrant, delinquent or unemployed or even incompetent, you could be put in front of the magistrate and dealt with accordingly. This was the slave bond which put people in the poorhouse where you would wear the P for pauper, which has now been transferred to your passport. So check your passport type and it will state P in black capital letters, which means not only are you a pauper, but you're recognised as being dead or lost at sea. As you agreed to the terms and conditions of the passport, you've fully accepted them. What happens when you don't pay? Well, they do have choices. You can be imprisoned if you agree to it. Yes, you have to be very negligent with your property, which is your person, for that to happen. But some people eventually let the courts do this. You do not have to. The process is administrative, and in order to save money, it is not a real court matter unless they decide to go for bankruptcy or apply for a charge against your property. Now, I went through the whole process, and it is a complete scam, with the Royal Courts of Justice complicit. These bankruptcy petitions can be thwarted, but as we know, if you let them do it, they will. It's only commerce after all. They can issue a summons which they print. Yes, the council print the summons. This means it has no authority, and council tax hearings are just that. They are not a court matter. This means their costs for court and issuing their summons can be easily quashed. If you pay something on your council tax before their administrative hearing, you can have the whole process put back to square one as they cannot pursue you for the debt if you have offered remedy. As you can automatically pay money into your council tax account, they will always accept your remedy whether they like it or not. Most of the time, councils will get most things wrong in court. That's very important. They pretty much always, in my experience and in the experience of others who have sent in information, get things wrong in court. They don't even have your case in front of them. The council hires a room in a building known as a court. If you call the court, they will know nothing about the matter and refer you back to the council. The council are often in error, so the fact that it is not a real court is a good excuse for their lies and maladministration to go unpunished. They will then print their notice of liability. This is not a writ or order and has no standing. If you ask for a copy of a court liability order for council tax, you are in for some ridiculous excuses and an indefinite silence. 
When you challenge the council and counterclaim against them as I did, the bulk hearing number on their so-called summons becomes a real court case number. So in the world of administrative corner cutting and usurping the rule of law, they have to try to at least make it look authentic. When they hand the matter over to the so-called bailiffs, or really debt collectors to be more precise, we now know that in council tax cases they cannot be working for the court if it's from one of these bulk hearings. Now these bailiffs also make up their own fees. They also state that they are acting on a court liability order. Well, they're not. They're just acting. I have had a lot of fun with so-called bailiff companies. You can too. If they try and charge you extortionate fees, you can file a form for complaint against them. Take their bond number also. Well, here's a letter we sent to a council when someone was summoned for non-payment. As stated earlier, if you offer remedy before the bulk hearing by paying a small amount into your account and the council continue with this administrative process taking you to court after they've accepted your remedy, they really have to go back to square one. So that's very important. Now here's a letter which we sent which stayed the whole process. This is to the name of Head of Revenues and Benefits for your local council. You address it to them. Following your acceptance of my offer of remedy for council tax account number and the name of the council on being in agreement by accepting my offer of payment on date between your name and name of head of revenues and benefits acting on behalf of name of council and being informed by a qualified officer of name of council that the council may proceed under an administrative assumption through their issuing of a computer generated summons whilst accepting my offer of payment and remedy in this matter I must inform you of the following any administrative error i.e. issuing a computer generated summons whilst being in receipt of payment and remedy with an attempt to cause a loss to your name will be deemed to be an abuse of court process for financial gain fraud this will result in counterclaim plus costs against the name of head of revenues and benefits as this potentially fraudulent and dishonorable action has now been brought to your attention i assume that you will not proceed with actions which are not only unlawful but are wasting the time of the courts and the crown yours faithfully then your name very important legal maxim here, equity will not allow a statute to be used as a cloak for fraud and the fraud is being done through statutes and administration. So we know that the council print the summons and there is no liability order, only a notice of liability. James questioned this and went into court. He actually was accused of filming in court and the police tried to charge him under an act which did not apply. It was an act that was to do with photography in court from 1925. As the council hire the room in the building known as a court, it is not a court matter. Therefore, we decided that we would play the police at their own game. In other words, challenge them. James has the full story for Windows on the World. The most worrying aspect of what happened to James is that CID turned up at his door basically bullying him into accepting a caution which means he accepts an offence as there was no offence committed James resisted this police came round many times with what appeared to be somebody from the local council with a broadcast camera so basically James was doorstepped and harassed in his own property this is very serious. The police also threatened to lock him up. They eventually put him on police bail and it now appears that this was merely just malicious in the respect that there was no record of James being put on bail on the police database. So in other words, the police and the council are acting as a local mafia. Okay, James, welcome back to Windows on the World. Yeah, thanks a lot, mate. Hi, yeah. Good to be back. We 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 filmed you um, on a previous episode of Winners on the World. We 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 talked about a, uh, an incident that happened. Basically, um, you were accused of recording in court, and the police came round to your house. It was a council tax um, hearing, which is not really a proper court, and people can find out um, why that's not a proper court if you go to council tax pantomime court procedure 
on um, an article on Windows on the World. But previously, you told us how police had come to your house uh, with a camera uh, on, and also trying to get you to go to the station to accept a caution for a crime that not only could you not have committed, um, you, you would not be guilty of anyway, because they were talking about... a. Uh, they didn't even know which act they were going to charge you under. They were trying to say it was under the 1925 Phot Photography Act, which which deals obviously with criminal cases in court. So it's for people's identity. So they, they even got the wrong act. So they were going to charge you for a crime you couldn't have committed under the wrong act. And they wanted you to accept a caution, uh, which means that you accept the crime. And you didn't want to do that. Um, so now we've got some updates. Um, tell us what happened. Well, now now that it's all over, I can say that, um, that, that the police have actually um, I got I got a notic notification of cancellation of bail, um, and basically what they've said is is that there is insufficient evidence to prove a realistic prospect of conviction. Well, that that's to totally true because it's like you said, it's it's under the uh, Criminal Justice Act of 1925, which is taking recordings, pictures, for photographs of a lawful court when there's no lawful court taking place. Um, but it, it, it wasn't all the harassment that, that's, that, 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 that's really sort of caught my attention. It's the actual process, um, uh, the way the police have dealt with me, which, is, which has shown that even the police themselves are operating in some sort of private capacity. There doesn't seem to be any court acknowledgement of what's going on, and they are, li are literally acting on, on their own behalf. I think um, that's very important, James, yeah. because a uh, very important point you brought up there, because um, this guy came round to see you, uh, CID, and he's, mm -hmm. he, was, he was calling you and apparently saying that he was going to lock you up. So basically he was threatening you with kidnap. Uh, After a full week, a week's worth of harassment at the premises um, when the tenant told the police that I wasn't there at the door uh, the incident with the, 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 when they were stating that they were going to threaten to force the way in without a search warrant and when she pulled the phone out to record it they backed off um, but they came back with constables then for a whole week after that with, with, with just downright sheer harassment after being told already, and then they came up to the premises at one time when uh, the nobody was in the premises, and the landlord come out and they threatened the landlord that they were going to bash the door down with a battering ram unless they let he let them in, and he asked them, "Is this lawful? What I'm doing? Is it legal?" And they went, "Yeah." Basically, told him, "Yes, it was okay." Um, and he let them in, but he, he did it to prevent criminal damage. And I've since spoke to the landlord, and he understands that in any case where something like that was to happen again, he must immediately phone 101, get it on the record and find out what's going on, and ask them control police are here, I'm a landlord, um, to a premises, the police are here saying that they've got the authority to bash the door down. They had no warrant and they they had no uh, crime to charge you with. Um, so they they acted completely unlawfully. It was interesting that a while ago there was a news report that Greater Manchester Police had had to pay out compensation for all the doors that they'd unlawfully knocked in.
That's interesting, James. So it means that the police came to your door without a warrant. You weren't there. They have no crime to charge you with. That they, they were stating that they had the authority to kick that door in and it was only your landlord who was present. So it's interesting that you've mentioned this because there was a story uh, that I read a while ago that Greater Manchester Police had had to pay out a lot of compensation for doors that they'd illegally kicked in. So this well, is you've recorded it, Mark. I mean, you, you've recorded it yourself of bailiffs actually um, getting police assistance and breaking down doors. You've, you've video recorded it yourself, and you've actually put that up. So that's we, right, we, we James. That that, that's absolutely right because what we did uh, is film the private bailiffs who had no authority and no warrant to steal this property. Um, that with the police asking the bailiffs what they wanted them to do. So the bailiffs said, yeah. well, can you please kick the door in? So the police did it on behalf of the bailiffs. We then got that confirmed by the police press office that if, they, if the police did that, it would be criminal damage. So we did get the police committing criminal damage on video. Our next guest, Nazrin, was evicted from her own property. This was due to a management company issuing charges which she disputed. A lady called for assistance from the police and she's now been arrested, handcuffed, took out of her own home. The student loans, the debt book has been sold. All of what we've talked about is coming your way. Sergeant. No, no, she's necessarily going to a police station at this time. What has she been arrested for? Well, that video was very shocking because Nazrin was actually peacefully occupying her own property and she was arrested for breach of the peace in her own house. It's very painful to watch because in that instance I realised something terrible is happening in this country. We did a show about people getting their doors kicked in um, by the police on behalf of private interests without proper court warrants and this is actual fact, this is happening. It's illegal and it's corrupt and you have to ask yourself why are the people who are willing to bust in people's doors, what the hell happened to them? You actually called me after they were smashing the door. Yeah. We actually got a phone call into their press office and first of all they said the police would never do that however they've been caught on video doing just that and um, the second time we called they said if the police did that it would be criminal damage so you've just witnessed cr criminal damage by the police i'm under a charge now at the moment of um trespass which trespassing is, uh... in your own property <laughs> yeah yep. it's like nazarene getting arrested for breach of the peace in a, in a lounge no, you know yeah, yeah. yep exactly yeah. <laughs> Well, it just makes you wonder, it's the police's job to actually make sure that those bailiffs have the correct court authority. And <clears throat> the reason that I feel that they're letting them get away with this is because the police themselves are actually physically doing this, even when, when it's nothing to do with bailiffs, and they're just serving their own interests and coming to the door because they want you... And, and they're doing it themselves. It, it, so there's clearly, I've seen, witnessed it myself, they've been coming to a premises, what, demanding to get in, making threats, pure intimidation, but that is intimidation. And anyone I tell this story to uh, c can only agree with that. So, so we've, we've discovered that the, 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 they're behaving in this way. And um, it, it's just completely alarming. Um, because they've put, they've put me through this whole process only halfway through the bail. They've just dropped it. OK, um, James, let me just pick this up because, just uh, for the sake of everyone out there, you had a guy from CID come round and, and say that he was going to put you in prison. He said he, was, he, said he was going to lock you up, and he was kind of laughing at it, about it. So, uh, well, yeah, long story short, from start to finish, roughly the way it happened was... And I'll, 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 speed, I'll speed, speed through it quite quickly. Um, CID comes to the door, male and a female, male spoke, and it's him that I spoke to, and it's when he first raised the, the uh, question of, would you be willing to come down voluntarily to the station under caution to be recorded, and he stated on video. 
Um, and uh, I declined. I had the children at the time, circumstances. Um, and I asked him what the actual offence was, and he wouldn't tell me the first time I saw He wouldn't even tell me what the offence was. He thought I asked him what, who the complainant was. Um, he wouldn't tell me that. He said that he would tell me all this once I was down there at the station. And I said, well, you know, tell me now and maybe I'll consider coming down. <laughs> yeah. um, but basically what happened was he, after that, he left and he come back and I spoke to him again. And I said, no, I still can't go. And I said, I, I have the children for the, for the next week. And he come back a week later when I said that I wouldn't have the children anymore. Uh, obviously, I wasn't here because I was only using this place uh, because I had the children at that time. And um, he came back and I wasn't here. And that's when they had the confrontation with the tenant at the door. And she says, look, he's not here anymore. We've already explained the situation. Uh, please leave. And, you know, it was very intimidating to her. And uh, it, it contradicted questions and, 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 and the way that he spoke, for example, he would say, you know, he would, he would be asked, is he, is he a criminal? And it's, no, 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 we just want to talk to him. But then they've been so forceful and been very harassing. So they're so obsessed with the process leading to a conviction that they just forget to actually analyse the, the actual crime, the, the alleged crime that's taking place. Um, yeah, well, that's exactly right. In your case, no crime had taken place, and they're trying to accuse you of something that not only could you not have done, that you didn't do. So, so in other words, they're making up crimes, and they're, they're harassing you. You went down to the police station yeah, well, to make a complaint, didn't you? After, and, that, and then what happened? Well, after they came back and they actually got in the premises and realised nobody was here, I mean, they never had any suspicion in the first place. I mean, coming in without a warrant is one thing, but coming in with no just cause either, just because, you know, we have, we have suspicion to believe that this person is here is just absolute nonsense. You know, if, if you really believe that and you really have suspicion, take it to a court and get your search warrant. You can do it within 24 hours. Why harass somebody for a week, two weeks? And it got to a point where when they eventually come into the premises, they backed off for about a week. And they left it for a little while, and then they come back again. And this is when we thought this is getting really bad. So I made a call to the CID department, and I asked them, what's going on? Why are, they, why are you coming out to this premises? Uh, and I, I gave them the address, I gave them the name. They did a search on the computer system, and they said that there is nothing on the system for this person, for this premises, and there is no warrant. I said, are you absolutely certain of that? Please, can you confirm that there is no warrant or nothing on the system for, and I gave the details again, and he said, yes. And I said, so why are they coming to the door harassing to a premises that I'm not there at? And they've been told that by the tenant and the landlord, and he says, I don't know. I says, have you ever heard of them taking cameras to doors before when they've got no lawful authority? And he said, no, not that I know of. And um, I told him that if it was to happen again and I was here, I was going to go out and video record it. It went rightly so. And then he told me, in addition to that, to phone 101 while you're at it and get it on the record. So this is a CID officer giving me advice on what to do about the harassment that he agrees with, rightly so, I should video record them, I should phone 101 at the door because this is unusual, even he doesn't know. The solicitors are telling me this is really unusual, it sounds very serious when really it isn't because I've got proof of that because they've declined the charge halfway through bail. They put me through it for punishment. It was to shut me down for speaking out, simple as that. That's absolutely right, James. And the fact that they put you on what's known as police bail is also very curious because you went down to the station just to actually find out what was going on and make a complaint about this guy who was basically threatening to kidnap you and continually harassing you. Well, like I said, when they, they backed off for a week and then they came back and then I phoned CID, it was the very next day. And I bumped into the landlord and he told me, he told me that CID, uh, a DC Dean Smith had phoned him 
and was asking for information about me. So I got the number from him and phoned him up myself. And he was extremely abusive. He told me, James, I'm going to find you and I'm going to lock you up. Those were his words. I'm going to find you and I'm going to lock you up. So he, so basically, he James, just this is a very interesting thing because <clears throat> so you had an individual there who was acting outside his own authority. Um, he had nothing to convict you of, no evidence against you. And he was he was actually saying that he was going to lock you up uh, before there'd been a court hearing, which would be kidnap. Well, I asked him for his four, his ID number, his, uh, his four-digit police number. He wouldn't give me it. I asked him what station he was from. He wouldn't give me it. I asked for the person who's made the complaint against me. He wouldn't tell me who that was. He says, we'll tell you that when we, when we get you down here. Him and Stephen said to me that once I was down, they, you know, they both promised me that once I was down there, I'd be giving that information. And, um, and it would all be due process from there. And I was like to myself, but it should be due process from before you even come to the door. You should have considered the information, but the, of course there is no information. It's, 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 it's them acting on behalf of private interest. Somebody from council tax has taken the reports, taken the, the, the work, and the recordings of the calls and the whole documented case, which has been made public record, and they've become seen it as a, um, a nuisance and a threat. In your opinion, do you think the jury was led? It's not mine to say. <laughs> Very diplomatic. Tell the viewers a bit about what happened to you. Well, they bribed uh three criminals to come in and give hearsay. If a bomb went off in London and took 92 lives, yeah, would you want to be on the payroll of that? It's um, all based on models and projections. It's all over barber shouting. In order to get me in prison, they probably broke, you know, a couple dozen laws. Free Yolanda. Y'all planted drugs on Yolanda, and we're going to get her released and get the crooked cops busted. That gave all the officers time for their adrenaline to, to slow down so we wouldn't get shot. Just for the viewers out there who may not know about this story, when did you discover this pyramid? In April of 2005, I first came to little Bosnian town of Visoko. When you drive someone to take their own life, like the CSA have done, I mean, that's an abomination. Thanks for being on Windows on the World. Peace to London. The rest is history. Everybody called me delirious after that. In summary now, what's happened is that you were put on some kind of police bail, which was incredibly inconvenient, having to go down and sign up the police station for no reason. You've never been charged with anything. You haven't committed any offence. So they concocted this police bail and caused you tremendous inconvenience. And now they've backed off. Just tell us a bit about how that happened and the final outcome. Whilst I was in the police station, the first thing they did, by the way, is put me in front of a, a mental health doctor. Um, I forgot to tell you about that. Uh, I, I, after a little while in the cell, when they first put me in there, they put me in front of a mental health practitioner. And he sat in front of me and he says, I've uh, been asked to have a word with you. We, I've been told that you've made some unusual presentations. I said, what kind of unusual presentations? He says, uh, well, some of the things that you've been saying to the police. Uh, I says, what things? And then he stopped and referred to a piece of paper on the table and wanted me to sign a consent form um, so that he could uh, act, act within uh, accordance of the uh, mental health uh, to um, assess me. So I, I imagine um, if I'd have signed that, I would, have, I would have been checked in for a further 21 days, so I knew what was going on there, and I completely laughed it off and, and got out of there. Um, uh, another, another thing I, I needed to know is that uh, when I actually walked into the interview room, uh, to speak to my solicitor, um, the first thing I asked her was, "Is uh, have you got full disclosure? And she said, yes, I've got full disclosure. And I said to her, so who's the person who's made a complaint against me? And she said, they haven't told me that information. Well, straight away I thought, well, she's not representing me. She's just here to be a, a legally qualified witness anyway. Um, but... You know, when I ask for full disclosure, she says, yeah, and doesn't have the name of the person who's made a complaint. She doesn't have full, she doesn't have full disclosure. Uh, so that's another point I have to make. But eventually, even after the interview, 
Um, they told me that they were going to release me without charge, but they wanted me to put, put me on bail. And I couldn't really fathom that because I've done nothing wrong and there's no evidence I've done nothing wrong. And I, it was me that walked into the station to find out what the hell they were playing at. So I got arrested. So why do I need to come back to the station? There's no evidence. So what... what and in the interview itself on record in front of a legally qualified witness, I'm asking them till I'm blue in my face who's the person who's made a complaint against me. If it... it I said, what is the act? What is the statute that an offence has been committed under? And they couldn't even tell me that on record in, in the interview. They wouldn't even tell me that. They wouldn't even confirm it for me in, in the interview. Um, <laughs> But the thing is, James, this is really important because uh, the whole point of this thing, as we've, we've kept reiterating, is the fact that you never committed any offence. You couldn't have committed the offence that they said you'd committed. And the offence which they were that which they were allegedly going to charge you with was not relevant at all to the situation. Um, so they they basically... They, they, so what ha what's happened is the police have, 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 have used um, harassment against you, made up an excuse, basically, because they can't charge you with anything. And then uh, yeah, they've taken you into police custody when, when you went down there to make a complaint um, and they put you on bail. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, you see, the, the weird thing about it is they wouldn't actually let me leave until they take my fingerprints and my DNA and all the rest of it, which I didn't initially consent to do. I went, no chance. I mean, I would have stayed there for 72, 96 hours. Um, but I had to get out. It would have caused me inconvenience and loss to have not got out because there are very important things that I needed to be done. And uh, it would have been too detrimental to me not to have been there for those important things. But um, in the end, I proceeded to uh, go ahead and get under duress. Of course, I was in the protest because it's, it's all going to go into the complaint anyway. But what, what, what stunned me the most is that the actual bail that they put me on I mean, even the official, even the documentations that they gave me, there's no bail reference number on the sheet. It's just a custody record. The actual bail is just made up. There is no actual bail file. It's just this printed out report. And what, what, what's even worse is that the actual charge has been declined by the custody officer. Now, the officer in charge was a detective sergeant, which, well, how's a custody officer got the authority to decline a charge of uh, the officer in charge of the investigation? Wouldn't she be the one to drop the charge? And it's because the, probably because the custody officer knows that there's Jack here and we should, he shouldn't be coming here. And halfway through the bail, they've sent me out a letter and says, there's no need to come here anymore. Uh, there's insufficient, insufficient evidence to provide a realistic prospect of conviction. Well, that was the case from dot, day dot. That, that was always the case. So, so why put me through the whole process? And in the interview room themselves, they've, they've put the video in, in, in front of me. And uh, I says, well, and I've actually told them that that is a private counsel tax matter, and uh, I could more than more than reason as to reason to them as to why that was, and all they just wanted to shove in front of me a bit was, no, oh, that's a court. Look, there's a three lay magistrate who are unqualified anyway. So you see, even if somebody else was to have actually have made a complaint. And they were to investigate, and they were to speak to me about it. And then I said, no, that's not a lawful court. That's a private counsel tax matter. There's an actual report in the public domain on that case. That's how, you know. And then told them that. They're then duty-bound to go and investigate what I just told them. They've got to consider all of the information. And they're not doing this. And there's uh, recently a case in Hartlepool, a similar case to myself in the TV license incident, uh, Mike Oldfield, I can speak about him because I'm, uh, I'm putting his case into the public domain. And um, he had three encounters at the door by TV license. He recorded them. He had a search warrant to enter and search premises. Um, but the difference with his case is that 
they filed charges of obstruction against him when they served the warrant. Well, he didn't obstruction, and he video recorded the whole encounter of him actually coming into the home and serving the warrant, and they got him on verbal obstruction, even though he physically let them in, and they did the duty, and there was no evidence of an offence being committed. They convicted him guilty in a court for obstruction because he was verbally obstructive. Yeah, I think we need to just start um, invoicing these people. We need to start invoicing them for all the time. So they, so all the time that you spent in that police station when you weren't really on bail, they just made it up. There's no record of it. Yeah. They did it to inconvenience you. You should be invoicing them now and gain, getting the money back, especially from Dean Smith, who instigated all this. So Mr. Dean Smith, um, or CID Dean Smith, please contact us. We'd love to talk to you about this to give your side of the story. <laughs> T.T. Stevens as well, he was the guy that initially come to the door. What I want to know is what, who and what put D.T. DT Stevens coming to my door? You see, the, the fact that there was no complaint is not what bothers me. The fact is, is the actual complaint itself would have had to have been issued by a magistrate or a clerk to the justice for it to stand anyway. So exactly, why are they, they just made it up. Anyway? It's because they're not adhering to actual procedure, lawful procedure. None of them are. The police are not doing it. The courts are not doing it. And the private interest are taking advantage of this because, basically, they've got a deal with them. And it's like, I mean, we've all seen the gangster movies. We all know it works. They've got their turf. You've got yours. And it's all working hand in hand for them. And it's, uh, there is no remedy on the local level. We've now got to start taking it to the high courts, making the complaints to the high courts, what those complaints are. This gentleman in Hartlepool that's uh, just been, he, he needs to appeal it, he needs to go to the High Court. He cannot get the information laid on oath that resulted in the search warrant being issued. He can't get a copy of it. And I think in his case, he doesn't even exist. In my case, I was, even, I was able to get even a copy of that. Even though it was complete lies, at least I managed to get a copy of the information laid on oath. At least there was a physical record of this actual application to the court. In his case, I don't think it exists. He cannot get a copy to save his life. Well, this and when is the main important thing. The court, yeah, this is the main when important When he raised it in the court, the information laid on oath, and he said to them, how was the actual warrant issued? Because they're trying to charge him with obstruction. So he's like, well, how was the warrant even lawful in the first place? How was it issued? Where's the information? And they said, well, that's not a matter for this court. And they just went ahead and proceeded with the obstruction charge. Well, in that, case, so, well, in that case, in that case, it's not a court. So this is the problem we've got, and yeah. they're not adhering to any of the rules. So, it, in other words, it means that um, we're on an equal footing. And what we need to do is, is really, we we need to start um, looking at where we stand within this system, knowing what our rights really are, because these people are incompetent and they're not administering the system of law properly and they're incapable of administering the system of law properly so they're imbeciles so anytime this happens these people who are um, administering which is a very a very high office really i mean they're acting as ministers really they're acting as a sort of priest class so you've got these people who who don't even know what they're doing um, basically administering against the public so what we need to do is wise up and make them liable at all times which is what you've tried to do and this case outlines the stupidity and the complete waste of public money that's going on because the public are paying for the police you know allegedly you know we pay for the police through council tax which is ironic because you're trying to point out the fact that council tax liabilities aren't lawful and the police are getting paid by us <laughs> it's terrible yeah. and, uh... <laughs> We're stating what's going on with these liability orders, and, and, and it, it reminds me of something that was within the, the notification of cancellation of bail. It says the fact that there is insufficient evidence or the case is not in the public interest at this time. So it's not, it's not they're saying it's not in uh, the public interest uh, to pursue uh, a conviction uh, of me, even though it's, it's me uh, bringing up fraud and corruption to them and, and, and that's not in the public interest. So in summing up here, 
there are two public interests. When judges say something is not in the public interest, what they mean is it's not in the public interest for the public to know about it. It is our duty to bring into the public all of these injustices, make all of these people personally liable and name them. We'll have more on this story over the next few weeks and thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us on Windows on the World. Remember, keep watching those, watching us, watching Windows on the World. We'll see you soon.